Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Just went out on a Thursday night, so perfect time as usual. I come back home, quiet, can film a video for you guys. And I've been meaning to do this video for a while, but real quick, ran into Angela tonight. If you were a longtime subscriber and saw the recent video with wife acceptance factor, she was the one posing as the wife, not my wife, but she uh, gave us feedback on different equipment. Uh, thankfully, she's not my wife because her taste is totally different than mine. But in any case, uh, she's going to be back on the channel. It's lots of fun. Uh, and we, we had fun tonight. And I put some more in the membership section. Got to see the full video. But I'll give you some excerpts here. Uh, so she'll be back on the channel soon. But that's not the purpose of today's video. The purpose of today's video is to feature something that dates back to the home entertainment show. When I was there, not only covering the show, I visited a longtime subscriber and friend, Michael, who has the Linkwitz speakers. And if you've been following me, I'm kind of known as Mr. DSP and Mr. Open Baffle. Those are two kind of tenets of my channel that I focus on a lot. And I just re-recorded my intro video to the channel where I address a lot of frequency, frequently asked questions, FAQs, that I get through email. But one thing I didn't address in there that I'm going to address here is the question I get the most is, which open baffle is the best? Is the Linkwitz better than the Spatial and the Pure Audio Project and the Maggie's and, you know, GR Research and all this stuff? And so, you know, what's best? I never really like to use that word because, you know, that's subjective to a person's taste and all. For my taste, though, the Linkwitz, certainly at that twenty to 30000 price point, is a speaker I recommend whether it's open baffle or non-open baffle, I think it's one of the highest value speakers on the market. It can give you cost no object performance in that twenty to thirty thousand ballpark for my taste. Now, the other speaker also in that I gotta give you a shout out to the technique speaker that Pete the Greek has. Those are the two that immediately if you like a box speaker, that type of uh bass uh versus open baffle bass that you get with the Linkwitz, those are when I talk to people and get their taste profile, those are my blanket recommendations. And quite frankly, the techniques and the Linkwitz as well. But techniques head to head with much more expensive box speakers, fifty, sixty thousand dollar big name ones. To me, it blew it away. <laughs> it wasn't even close. Got actual twenty hertz with a test tone signal, and also playing, you know, songs loud. Other speakers were crumbling under the pressure. The techniques was killing it. You want to play F and F. And uh, have your ratchet ass friends over? <laughs> You're gonna need a techniques versus some of these mega dollar speakers actually to hear it at high volumes. But getting back to the Linkwitz, the level of refinement, uh, open baffle, all the advantages. Siegfried Linkwitz, if you don't know who he is, he's a legend in the industry. In fact, recently I think there was a thread in the, either in the forum or on the magazine of Op Absolute Sound talking about, uh, and I don't know who said it from Absolute Sound, but. Siegfried Linkwitz, Floyd O'Toole, and Edgar Schwery with Bach that I also represent. Those two, those three people are light years ahead of a lot of others in terms of understanding um, how sound propagates, imaging, and in the case of um, Linkwitz, he actually designed crossovers and speakers. And it took a lot of effort over the years to get what he thought was a reference quality speaker. And it's actually quite reasonable relative to the performance value and that's what michael owns and i featured it many times at the shows when i've gone into their room love that sound openness and they just disappear and you feel like you're listening to music not a speaker shouting at you so for different taste profiles you know uh so be it but for those that like open baffles i do elevate the link uh slightly higher than the pure audio project um for sure, and then as well as some of the spatial ones. Now, spatial are even cheaper, and so in their budget points, you know, they're they're a strong consideration with Maggie's and whatnot. I put the GR Research in Extremes and the Linkwitz, you know, apples in, to apples in most cases. Um, as I've said before, I think the mid range and tweeter of the Linkwitz has a few advantages. Um, the base array, the point source base array. Uh, for the GR Research and Extremes, I think it gives that a very strong advantage, at least for my taste. So that's why I haven't really pivoted, but I can see where people can easily choose one or the other. Uh, and then benchmarking the performance of both of these to 
much more expensive speakers at any type, seal box, ported, whatever you want to call it. These can perform, you know, all, other than the IO designs, the other open baffle that I love. In fact, just heard the next pair is coming to America. It's going to be wired with in acoustic pure silver internal cable. Well, there's no internals to the IO designs. Can't wait to hear that and see that. Uh, but that's a much more expensive build and uh, does have an, ex an aesthetic advantage over the Linkwitz. But that's the main problem I think most people have with the Linkwitz, other than there's a prejudice against their active amplification that they give to the uh, as offer as part of the package. Now, at the show in Costa Mesa, they actually showed it with past labs amplification one day and then their own amplifier modules that are dedicated for the drivers that they picked. And again, I personally think that this discrimination against active and these letting the manufacturer pick the drivers that match their speakers is the smarter way, especially if it's active and the amplifiers are dedicated to individual drivers. So they're not having to drive separate drivers and go through a hornet, you know, a rat's nest of crossover parts. Obviously, if you have great parts like a lot of speakers do, IO Design, GR Research, other, you're not going to hear too much of a de degradation. But just in theory, when you can dedicate a single amplifier to a single driver, you have a lot of advantages with uh, ignoring some phase shift issues. And just the, the power delivery is just a lot more sudden. And if you see advantages in power delivery with power conditioners, power cords, and whatnot, obviously, if you can take the, the passive crossover parts out of this and have power delivered straight to woofers, that's where I think you do hear an advantage, at least I do with my active wisdoms, um, most notably going the active route. Plus, you have some control as well uh, when you go an active route. But that's a subject for another day. I don't want to get into the weeds of active versus passive too much, other than to say if you're prejudiced against what Linkwitz offers as pre-done pre package with the amplifiers included, I don't think that's the smart move to be prejudiced against that. You could actually be worse off using other amplifiers. And constantly you see people with speakers driven by the wrong amplifiers. And so let the manufacturer pick it for you. You take one less variable out of the equation. And everything that Linkwitz has done from the cabinet structure, which is very limited, but what they do is they offer that Panzerholtz, which I'm known as Mr. Panzerholtz too. I've talked about that a lot as a speaker material. Even talked about hoping one day could do the GR Research and Extremes in that. They already offer that. One of the few other than Kaiser that offers that. The way they run the wiring, totally invisible. It's an open baffle speaker, but you won't see any wires exposed. That's really impressive. And the base module of the Linkwitz is not touching any of the surrounding structure that supports the mid-range and tweeter. So resonances from that open baffle base are not directly coupled to any of the other drivers. That's a huge advantage because a lot of cabinet resonances are because of the woofer. You take that out, these mid-ranges and tweeters barely even move, creating almost no resonances in a cabinet, even if it's MDF. So it's a very smartly done speaker, and as you're going to hear at Michael House, it's extremely good sounding, and he's got it dialed in. And this is another important takeaway, because I've talked about great gear is only one part of the equation. Dialing it in. He's got a mini DSP. He's got measurement tools, and he's got also setup tools, measurement to get exactly centered. He's got a very difficult room, because he's got an angled center, uh, ceiling, but it's not even north-south, it's east-west. And so it's very hard to get a true center image that way. But he's got natural room treatments, whether it's bookshelves, uh, furniture, rugs. And again, when he gets the box, he's going to get the box at some point. It's going to be very interesting to get uh, measurements. Because let me deviate for a little rant. <laughs> if you don't have measurements and you don't have the tools, you should not do room treatments on your own. These people that just give general advice, look at a picture of your room and say, oh, put one here, there, there, you're done. <laughs> okay, you may be okay, 
but that's not going to be optimal. I can guarantee you. Uh, it may be good for certain people's standards. It's not going to be good for your standards. I guarantee when you hear better, it's certainly not good enough for my standards. You have to have measurements, know exactly where reflections are, know exactly. You can hear when you improve that. Uh, and you can hear it in my room here, what my voice sounds like here versus other rooms. Uh, you can hear it yourself. Go into different rooms. Reflections can only change what's in the recording. You do not want to hear that many reflections. Obviously, there's no way for you to create an anechoic chamber in your room anyway. So this fear of anechoic chambers, you know, sheer folly. Um, you have to do it, though, smartly with tools and measurements. And again, this is something that Michael's already leapfrogged way ahead of most people's with not only great gear, but setting it up perfectly, having the mini DSP, having Dirac to do the measurements. And then once he gets the Bach, that's an in-ear measurement, that's going to take it to a whole nother level. Uh, his turntable rig is phenomenal. Again, everything he's done here is reference level, but you're not going to see excessive costs. It's all done smartly. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and get to the footage. Hope you enjoy. Okay, guys, if you're a longtime subscriber, you'll recognize this room. It's uh, Michael's uh, amazing um, link with speakers that we did a whole Zoom interview a while back. You should watch that for a lot more details, but I'm going to walk you through his system. This is my first time actually being at his place, and uh, he lives in uh, Los Angeles. Also, um, one thing to notice on top of these really cool link with open baffles, I have plenty of videos on these link widths. Um, Really killer speaker, one of my favorites, especially for the money. You can't really beat it at the price point. Rear firing tweeters, uh, high quality drivers, open baffle base. One thing to pay attention to, I always talk about um, base drivers interrupting things in a seal box cabinet. On an open baffle like this, this is totally decoupled from the main chassis. So everything going on here, it can be launched, time aligned, but no, nothing is impacting these drivers from a vibration. Plus on the floor, negating it with the Townsend. And uh, maybe we go through a little bit other stuff, refresh people's memory yeah, so, here, Michael. Yeah, hi everyone. So uh, for um, the system, we've got the mini DSP that is acting as uh, the source and that is feeding over here um, the uh, ATI 8 channel um, NC uh, uh, class D amplifier to 200 watts per channel um, and this is the part of the liquid system the ASP that is the um, active uh, signal processor which is basically the outboard um, uh, uh, what do you call them? The uh, crossover. Crossovers. Yeah. yeah. And then I have some various older sources, like, you know, for video, I've combined a couple it with of the Anthem system. Yeah. yeah, oppos for when I spin discs. Um, I have a nice turntable, which, uh, you know, yeah, let's take a look at that. Analog folks. Nice thorns. Like. So this is a huge thorns. Plant. Yeah, this massive platter. You can see it's completely balanced uh, horizontally and nice. vertically with, uh, with everything. This was my dad's, and I really? restored it. Yeah, that's, he bought it new. Cool. And, two arms uh, you got. Two arms, so I've got, uh, this is an audio mods arm, and it's running an Ortofon uh, bronze cadenza cartridge. And this is a Jelco 12-inch arm, and it's running a uh, TRX2 uh, uh, moving magnet. Cool. My wife's. And we got... Uh... The, the, don't forget the turntable light that... Um, yeah, the, the Uber light flex. Yeah. And then we've got some big subs. We've got the Rhythmic uh, F15s, uh, HPs, and one here and one in the back room. Uh, so yeah, there's the Uber light flex. Um, the, we have the Rhythmic subs. I have two of them. So there's one here, and one hiding um, in, under that. Uh, yep. Corner table there. Yeah, I see it. Um, yeah. Both of them are also decoupled, you know, so much like the Townsend, I found that. Uh, yeah, for the subs, these, even more so, yeah. Putting these. Uh, those you know, are the um, sub dudes. Sub dudes. Yeah, under yeah I've them used those. A bit. Yep. Yeah. 
Because, yeah, even if it just cre stops a little bit of that resonance, it'll stop things in your room. It used to rattle that rear yep. um, bookshelf quite a bit without yep. the subdued, so... Yeah, so piggybacking on what people say that whatever you put on your speakers doesn't matter. Again, we've got proof here. Uh, it does matter, even if it's not impacting the performance of this to an audible extent that you can hear, uh, although it should, it will impact other things in the room. So that's part of the reasons why you're going to want these. But uh, yeah, these are actually pretty neat. I mean, the whole thing, you know, mm -hmm. is, like it is a seismic. Uh, you know units so it's it's based on the same stuff as uh, earthquake uh, building isolation is yeah and so again link which um you, when you buy them it come, comes with the amplification active crossover the uh cabling cabling it's really creative so one other thing we talk about in the zoom if you watch but michael's room you may not see a ton of treatments in the traditional sense of uh, audio file treatments, but everything in this room basically is a treatment. <laughs> These couches, um, everything on the wall here, um, very neutral sounding room, as you can probably even hear in my voice. It's a slanted ceiling, which is not always the easiest to, uh, and quite high at certain points, but you're not hearing a lot of echo. It's got that right amount of reverb. It's not too lively. Uh, so again, it's not about sometimes um stuffing it with a lot of room treatments if you've got a family room like this and you've got the skills that he has for setup and as well as dsp you can get a effortless sounding system that can be pleasing and listen to all day and that's basically what i heard today so thanks again michael thank you